Welcome back to the deep dive. Today we are looking at a very specific, uh, very high risk period. The winter storm risk assessment for January 9th to the 18th, 2026. That's right. And this is really the moment that what analysts are calling the great Eurasian weather divergence snaps into focus. So our mission today is to unpack that. We're looking at the meteorological side, but also the, you know, the geopolitical risks that come from this, this unprecedented atmospheric setup. It's not just about who gets snow. This is a structural shift, a continent wide event. Okay. So let's get right into it. What kicked this whole thing off? Our sources are all pointing to one root cause. The catastrophic failure of the stratospheric polar vortex. It happened after a major sudden stratospheric warming in SSW back in late 2025. And that event, miles above the surface, literally split the polar core into two lobes. Exactly. And the failure of that high altitude system creates this, this rinse, lather, repeat cycle of whiplash down here in the troposphere where we live. Which gives us these incredibly volatile, really luby jet stream configurations. Mm, yes. And it's all sustained by a strongly negative Arctic oscillation the AO, which keeps that pattern locked in. The jet stream gets wavy, it slows down. So instead of a tight, fast river of air, it gets lazy. It gets lazy. And that lets these huge masses of frigid Arctic air just spill south and then they just oh, sit yeah. there for far longer than they should. And that's the direct result of Arctic amplification, right? The Arctic warming four times faster than the rest of the planet. That's the engine behind all this. That structural breakdown miles up is what's causing the chaos on the ground. Which brings us to the split, this massive divergence across Europe. Absolutely. In Western Europe, the UK, the Netherlands, they're actually seeing a shift to milder air. But the collision point between that mild air and the entrenched cold is what's causing the problems. Massive maritime volatility, I'm reading. Real logistical strains. Huge. We're seeing reports of reduced productivity at major northern ports, Rotterdam, Hamburg. They're dealing with heavy snow, frozen track switches. It just stops rail operations cold. A huge headache. But the contrast with Central and Eastern Europe is, it's stark. It could not be sharper. That whole sector is locked in under a deep trough of low pressure. Yeah. It is much, much colder than the last couple of winters. And this is where that critical feedback mechanism comes in, the snow cover feedback. Precisely. The cold brings the snow, but then the snow itself becomes part of the problem. Right. It acts like a giant white mirror reflecting the sun's energy back into space. And that just reinforces the frigid pattern. It digs it in deeper, making it that much harder for any milder air to break through. Okay, let's pivot east, because this is where the forecast goes from challenging to uh, genuinely extreme, Russia and the Caucasus. Here, the risks become almost contradictory and, you know, existential. In Russia, we're seeing two very different and surprising risks emerge. What's the first one? Agricultural vulnerability. <laughs> In southwest Russia, this deep chill is arriving over bare ground. There's no insulating layer of snow. Which means a severe risk of winter kill for their winter wheat crops. A direct threat to the next harvest, yes. Yeah. So that's the immediate danger. What's the paradox you mentioned? Well, further east, in Siberia, the cold is just unbelievable. We're talking minus 50, maybe minus 60 degrees Celsius. Wow. And analysts are suggesting this could create what they're calling a natural Siberian disinfection. The idea is that the extreme cold might actually terminate huge populations of agricultural pests and pathogens. So a brutal winter now could mean a healthier, better yield later in 2026. What a trade-off. It is. But the most immediate infrastructure crisis is unfolding in the Caucasus. Turkey's issued alerts for 63 provinces, hmm. but the situation in Abkhazia is critical. The system there is at a breaking point. It really is. 80% of their energy network is already in a near emergency state. The reservoirs at the main hydropower plant are critically low. But the weather isn't the only factor here, is it? No, and this is key. The situation is being made so much worse by the illegal proliferation of cryptocurrency mining. It's a massive parasitic drain on an already failing grid. The weather is just exposing a weak system. So when you pull back, what does this all mean? This entire 2026 winter season feels like a huge structural stress test. It is. It confirms what we've been seeing. Mm -hmm. The Arctic is warming faster. That's making the jet stream lazy and wobbly. And the result is these massive continent splitting events. One side freezes while the other gets whiplash. So the big takeaway for risk management has to be that we can't just track simple weather fronts anymore. Exactly. We have to adapt to these deep structural stratospheric driven events. This is the new pattern. So we'll leave you with a final thought on that. Right. And it's an important question to consider. When infrastructure strain gets to this level and human factors, 
like that unauthorized crypto mining, make it worse. Yeah, yeah. How much of the future risk is purely meteorological, and how much is really a failure of our own operational resilience? That's something to mull over as you see these stories in the news.